الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي الرسول وقول الأمر منكم and always a reminder from myself أنا عبدك العجيس الضعيف ومسكين وظال وجهل and but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence and alhamdulillah that Allah brought us into the holy month of Shahwal and the reality of one and zero and this binary code in our lives in which to continuously efface ourselves. And the more we're able to take a path of being nothing, the more we can achieve towards Allah's Divinely grace. And this material world builds us to be something. So that to take away that grace and that Divine blessing means that the Pharaonic system is the opposite. That they want to be the one and, and they teach everyone else to be zero. And that they'll keep the knowledge and they'll keep everybody in ignorance. And they inherit from Pharaoh. Ananiya, Ana, I am the Lord Most High when He was talking to Sayyidina Musa salam, I have life and I have death. So this system and the Pharaonic system of this material world is built on that, that the one who has will be powerful and that everyone else should be kept in ignorance. And Allah's system is the reflection in the mirror opposite of that that take a path to be nothing and that Allah is the one. And the only way to draw near to that reality means it's a continuous path of, of humbling and practicing humility. As we practice the humility, learn in our lives to shut down, shut off and not need to reply to everything, not needing to react to everything as difficult as that is. When we learn that system we find ourselves drawing near to Allah's Divinely grace. So anyone who knows that when they're on a path and they stay silent through humiliation they feel Allah's rahmah coming to them. And as much as we Remind ourselves of that reality. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. As much as we can feel Allah's Divinely grace. And then people say, I don't feel anything. Somebody may email and say, I don't feel anything. And most likely if we're following the dunya system in which we have to respond to everything, to everyone, then you have already taken the position of one. And how can you feel anything when you are the one? When you answer back to everything, you deal with everything, you have the arrogance of, of bad character, there's nothing to feel. And that's why the, the material world system is developed to kill the heart. All their teaching, all the music, all the, the images, all the social medias that are being put out is designed to kill the heart and to make you to be the one. All the desires and all of the material, everything is now feeding the heart and souls of people of an insatiable appetite. That nobody will be content with what they have or what they eat or what they wear. 
and it's a system to destroy. And the tariqahs uphold the heavenly system, even within Islam it's not being taught. They say Islam is submission and they don't teach how to submit. Again we'll go back to, you see those akhis in the park arguing with everybody. You see them come out and hipster imams in which they're trying to be too cool even for Islam. Means that even within Islam they're not following Islam which means to submit. So it's not a given that everybody's doing it, it's actually an ancient reality that nobody seems to be understanding. But Allah safeguarded that in the turuqs that follow my people of tafakkur, follow these inheritors are the ulul amr upon this earth and the system that been given to them is this path of humility. That's why if you come across Sultanul Awliya's du'as in the app, you never read a du'a like that. I'm nothing, I'm abdik al ajis, I'm, I'm coming through the door of disbelief, I negate all my actions, I'm not coming to Allah with, with any pride of I've done something, I've done nothing, everything I did probably was done wrong. People read these and who, who could write something like this and who would ever recite something like this? Because their system is what? Alama, I'm alama, he's big alama and this thank you for this alama and this alama came here. No, but that was never the system. The system to reach the reality was to negate oneself, that absolutely nothing. And it's only for Allah if He wants to draw me near to that presence. And every time Allah wants to draw the servant near, they're going to be tested in humility. So that becomes a, a great gift but at that time people don't see it as a gift, they see it as humiliation. So the emails come in, why was I humiliated? Why does this humiliation keep happening? Because a reminder for ourselves is if Allah loves you the only way you can reach the one is to be the nukht. And the, the system of earth keep pushing an energy onto you to make you think you're the one, you're capable of being the one. But in Divine Reality Allah has to crush the servant. So then the, the state of humiliation and humbling oneself then has to be ingrained within our being. And we repeat it over and over years and years of repeating and maybe at some point somebody will get it and I say, you know what, I think I got it, I just don't want to answer back anymore because this is taking a lifetime to get to where you're talking about. And say, yes, the shaykh will sit with you 30, 40, 90 years if he's still around teaching the same thing until one point you decide that, I think I want to reach Divine Grace, I want to feel the energy that you're talking about. And the only way you can approach to reach Allah's grace is to be humiliated, right? So that was in the cave. Zahiri they say, oh recite Surah Kaf so that you'll be protected from Dajjal. And internal people say, why don't you become the people of the cave to be protected from Dajjal? So it wasn't only reciting Surah Al-Kahf from Prophet but because of reciting it every week and every Jummah maybe you would have a hint that I should be from these people of Ashab Al-Kahf. So like a, a billboard Prophet gave to us, the Dajjal coming and here's a billboard, oh here's a secret in Surah Al-Kahf. Why? And awliya come and teach will be then from Ashab Al-Kahf in which Allah shows these pious people threw rocks at the dog. So our life is a, is a series of rocks. Our life will be a series of rocks. If we get that and we understand that then when humiliation comes, some embarrassment comes, something that not comfortable comes, it's Allah's grace is coming because He wants to bring that even if it's this big 
and inflated in Allah's presence, he wants to bring it down to be nothing and move into my Divine the Presence. Allah bless those whom are already deflated themselves because it's a little bit easier process. Means the rocks hurt less, they're less intense because you already took a path in which, don't throw too hard, I'm already down to the earth, I'm really not acknowledging myself as something. But if we follow the trick of dunya, the dunya want to come and say, no you're something, you're great, you're the one. And this whole life then becomes a deception and deceit and they never reach that rahmah, they never reach the true energy and qudra because how can the one and reach to the one? How can that reality reach to the presence of Allah that Allah accepts nothing but His Divine the Presence, doesn't accept bad character, doesn't accept egoism, doesn't accept all of these characteristics of shaitan in which Allah said, bow down, He said, no, I can't. And every subsequent order became more harder for shaitan. That even when Allah granted another chance, now bow down, I can't. So each time they would fail, it would become much more difficult because the nafs becomes much more inflated. Means then the reality of this binary code which are many because on and off is a state and we said before when you ponder and you think on and off is an energy because there's no on and off, right? Do you study binary code in school Ibrahim? No, not yet, maybe next year. They talk about in computer science on and off, on and off, on and off. As if it's something you turn on like a light switch and turn off but it's just the absence of energy because a pulse will come and they'll quantify that as on. The absence of that pulse they'll say is off. So means this is a Divine Qudra and an immense power from Allah in that our lives Allah to dress us and bless us from the immensity of that reality of taking a life in which to train ourselves to be off. That we don't need the, the, the power from this material world and the fake on. We don't need what shaitan is going to pump to us of an energy to think that we reached an energy, we reached a status. We said everything from this physical world is the exact opposite. So the ones whom live in these high penthouses, those are the pits of Jahannam. And that's why Prophet described, don't go over three feet, over three stories. Why? Not that you're bad but you're now entering into the abode of Jahannam because don't look at it as like this. In your spiritual vision you should have seen that as actually really down. And the people whom walk low to the earth they're actually in the penthouses of heaven. But because heaven and earth they're upside down on this earth. Inception, I think there was a movie, Inception where everything was flipping back and forth. And this is in our spiritualities mirroring. We go through a gate on 27 but the reality is actually 72. That's why you walk on the gate of 27. So it means when you walk low to the earth you're reaching higher abodes in paradise and you're from the penthouse people of paradise and those that are striving for the penthouse on earth they're actually moving very low because go and ask them what they had to do to achieve that, how many they had to destroy, how many people they had to lie and to abuse, how many people they stole from in their pursuit of that wealth. And as a result they went down but they appear to be up on this earth. Then we talked about because these examples in life bring it home for us for even the children to understand. So what is the shaykh talking about? He's talking about on and off. 
If anything you do in this world wants to make you feel like you're on, you're going down. And anything in this world that you can make yourself to feel like you're off, you're going up. Your elevator's going up. But then shaitan comes to trick you and say, you know what, be clever and tell the shaykh, I'm not really going up and I'm not really going down. I'm just like on this floor right now. And that's a lie too because their science tells you what? Is gravity. Allah made this earth with a gravitational pull and that was a great sign of the power of dunya will suck you in. There is no neutral on earth, agnostic, whatever they want to call people who are neutral, you're not neutral, you're just going down slower. Because the gravitational pull of the material world is designed by Allah pull you. So it means what? The default is if you're not striving and fighting to go up, you are going down every day. There is no one who can say that, no, I just… I'm sitting nice and patiently here, neither up nor down. So, no, you're wrong. Gravity is taking you down and if you go back and meditate over your life today versus last year, you went down. Your choices were worse, your associations are worse. The things that you do and you think nobody sees you are worse and everything is being observed. Every phone is observed, every hand is observed. People are surprised if the government knows what you're doing on your phone. You don't think Allah knows? His angels know? Prophet doesn't know? Means there is no neutral. The gravity is pulling you down. So then Prophet gave to us is Jihadul Akbar. The, the fight against yourself means what? The one who wants their life to continuously go up because it's like those game shows or kid shows you watch. They put a fire and this elevator is like going to the fire and you're feeling the heat and they're like trying whatever they can in the game not, not to go down into the slime which represents a fire. But that's, that's real life. Your elevator is going down and Prophet gave to us that your greatest fight is to go up is to fight yourself. At every moment it's a fight to press the button up. It's a fight to stay quiet. It's a fight not to fight. It's really easy not to fight. Somebody wants to say something to you and you're, you're, you're eloquently trained, fighting very easy, right? If you're no mind person, poor person you're oppressed already. Because you don't even know when somebody hurting you and, and harming you and, and abusing you. But if you have a mouth, you can use it but you're pressing down. And that's all the shaitan wants, use it, use it, come on man. You use it, you press the button, your elevator went down. So the whole system is rigged to go down. Choices become worse, energy becomes worse. And we said before all of a sudden you go and say, who the heck are these people on this floor? They email and say, there's just like bizarre people at my work, there's bizarre people all around me. That doesn't happen randomly. We're giving you the tools to be self-aware. When a day comes and you find kind of creepy people all around you, your elevator stopped on the wrong floor. So when the person who makes jihad al-nafs fights seriously against themselves, they do their salawat, they do their prayers, they do their good deeds for young, they do good deeds at home so the family's happy. Those are immense deeds to Allah 
they're helpful, they're cheerful, they, they have good character, they're the good deeds they can do. They get older you can drive and then go help other people. But the good deeds and the actions, the salawats, the, the nasheeds, the recitations, the drumming, anything that we do in the way of Allah is a fight to press the button up. And if this button goes up and it goes up, then you get the other emails that I, I feel very lonely. And it's supposed to be that way. But we didn't get too many comments on that, nobody talked back to ask any questions about that. But there's a lot of emails, they feel lonely. Well because as you go up in the heavens there's less people on those floors. Because most of the people are shooting for Jahannam. They're on very fast elevators going down. Mawlana Shaykh would say that he's astonished because shaitan would be astonished at how fast people are going down to hell. That he's astonished at what these humans do now. He's taking a lesson from them. What they used to have to inspire humans to do, he said, they are innovating in ways that can't be imagined like a rocket elevator going down and the tariqahs uphold the path up. And every step you go and every floor we go, less humans are there. So then you find in your environment there's less people around, which is better because the basement was dangerous. The mass of the peoples were dangerous. Their energies are becoming extremely dangerous. The hidden characteristics, extremely dangerous. And to be at comfort with yourself, that's why they're teaching the muraqaba, that's why the shaykh that teaches this reality is teaching you the tools to be comfortable on your floor. Because on your floor are less humans but doesn't mean it's empty. It means there's many spiritual beings. As soon as you sit and do your tafakkur and contemplation you find contentment. Because Allah will surround you with more worthy servants. It says, those dirty servants we exchange them, the ones who want to harm you, the ones who want to pull you and drag you, the ones who want to gossip to you and, and do every type of harm in your reality, I surrounded you by more worthy servants. But they're not so visible to the naked eye. So then they meditate, they make their tafakkur, they make their contemplation. Then they find all their ibadah and all their worshipness and this time they have Allah opens for them immense oceans of power because all of the true servants of Allah are on those floors and they make themselves available to those servants because they deem them worthy to be in that association. But if you're in the basement hoping that these high level servants in their spiritual form are coming to hang out with you, they don't. Because the truth and falsehood they don't match. They're up way high in their lofty uh, stations and they're wondering what people are doing down there, the filth of the, this, that type of life. Why would somebody want to go to that? Why would somebody want to talk to that? Why would somebody be wanting to be around that? What they inspire for us is, take your elevator, come up back to where you belong. And the people that you think you knew on those floors, maybe they don't exist anymore on the higher floors. And those relationships are no longer needed and new ones will come. Those whom Allah deems worthy. So you may meet a friend in the basement but doesn't mean you're taking them to the penthouse. Paths of people become separate. One whom is destined to go up high and they find the zeal and the excitement of Keep pressing the button. 
And others may say, I don't want to press this button. I'm actually not liking this floor. And in every opportunity they're trying to get off the floor, get off. And that's a reality. You can't go to the basement, put everybody you want and say, I'm taking them now all to paradise. Because Allah was telling Prophet it's not who you guide but whom we guide. You can want to put people but if Allah is not allowing it, Allah didn't write it. So you, you, you're forcing your elevator, go up, go up, slower, slower, slower. But inevitably you're finding some saying, ah, you know, it's, it's, this is enough for me, thank you. I'll take my own elevator with Sayyidina and a new son said, your elevator is going too fast for me, I'm clever, I'll take my own elevator. And Sayyidina Nu told his son, uh, there's no elevator but this elevator because you're not going to survive what's coming. And this is the concept of then now tariqahs. Means that tariqah comes in the last days, these are very powerful elevators. And they ask people, get on and get on board. And the elevator's moving. These are the practices, these are the awras, these are the wazifas. And the other Muslims in other elevators say, why do you have to go in their elevator? Say, because they have really strong elevators. They have a system in which to keep pressing the buttons and they keep skyrocketing and going very fast, very high. Well the other ones, they don't have that. So you see the Muslims on TikTok and social media when they're posting, you know they have no shaykh. They're making makeup videos. They make all sorts of bizarre videos and mix it into Islam, men and women. Clear, there's no shaykh. This is somebody in their own elevator being fooled. Fooled in thinking that they're going up. But they're actually pressing their buttons down, down, down onto the floor they enter. Shaitan says, take that thing off of you anyways now, it's not allowed on this floor anymore. And then they take their Islam off thinking they became clever now. So you see it, we see it happening before our eyes very fast. They call them influencers. The one day they're at one station, they don't have a tariqah. And they start saying and teaching and doing things and trying to be an example, trying to get likes, trying to be cool. And before you know it they're not actually going up, they're actually going down. And the more they go down shaitan is now beginning to now compromise with them. It was okay when you were doing like that up there but on these floors take these things off, uncover your head, trim your beard, trim it again until it looks like it's a pencil stick going around here. Ridiculous, what is you doing like that? Why? Because shaitan's playing with them. One floor down, again you trim. One floor down, again you trim until you're straight out bold face on their floor. Why? So that you can't differentiate man and woman. To even look at a man with no hair on his face was haram. And Prophet described to his companions, if you leave 10% of what I'm teaching you, you're going to hell. In last days if they follow 10% they go to paradise. Means how difficult the process became. Now nobody talks about it anymore but these are just the evidence of this elevator and its movement. Shaitan is fooling people to think their deeds are good. But if you sit back as an observer because tafakkur people are observers, they observe themselves and they observe the world so they can see exactly how fast events are moving. Before you had to have some sort of spiritual vision to see what's going on in the world. Within an hour of TikTok you saw the whole world, news clips of everything. Every type of horrific characteristic you understand this elevator is going down very fast and the new evilness of norms becomes more normal, more normal means their elevator is going down very fast. And we describe when we're talking to the gentleman in the office tonight is that Mawlana's miracle, Sultanina Awliya Shaykh Muhammad Nazim al-Haqqani Qaddasallahu Siru, 
uniquely his style and uniquely his reality was to take immense Islamic realities and make it so simple that any child could understand this sharia and could understand this fiqh. We don't need to give complicated Islamic jurisprudence to prove to you what is halal and what is haram. And you can simply understand, is your elevator going up like Shaykh says? And you really think you're going to go up by yourself and make all the right choices yourself? Then watch the other social media groups and say they think they're going up but uh, this character doesn't look like it's up. Look like actually their elevator is going down very fast. Then I understand, oh so when I'm with the tariqah their elevators are very stronger. Yeah because they have a lot of opportunities. You have opportunity to come and drum, to listen, to do salawats, to do charity, to do good deeds, to have this love, to hear these knowledges that shoot you like a rocket up floors. And then the tools in life on that when you're on those floors, how now to survive, how to breathe, how to do your practices, how to put your ta'weez, how to put all of the spiritual gifts that Allah giving to you for this existence on higher levels. We pray that Allah give us more and more understanding on very simple terms that the children are listening online, they're getting it, it's not complicated. And the people whom trying to find something complicated, they don't get it because their comments are, why you don't talk about sharia, why you don't talk about fiqh, it went way over your head. And the kid knows the reality but the one whom's trying to find a problem will find a problem and the reality is lost to them. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa <coughs> bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nawjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.